But now I'll rise above you. So yeah, tell tell us a little bit, you know, about yourself. So you came from Deerfield Beach. You also played at St. Thomas Aquinas, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I started off my ninth grade, my ninth and tenth grade year of varsity. I played at Monarch, which is up in Coconut Creek, where I'm originally from. And um, yeah, I played there, and then um, I transferred to St. Thomas, and then my senior year, I transferred to Deerfield to finish off my high school um, career. Yeah. Um. What made you do those changes? Well, no, no. So, like, what happened was, um, um, at Monarch, I just felt like, um, I had I made first team all county as a sophomore, and I was the only, oh, wow. like, I, I was the only got kid on there, or whatever, without without offers. And like, me growing up, I was never the one to like, um, oh, I need confirmation to to know that I'm good and stuff, but like. I seen all these other kids getting offers and it was just like I had to come back to reality and, you know, just tell myself, like, I deserve, you know, I deserve what all these kids are getting right now. And um, so I, I was just a little like weird about that. And then I knew uh, um, Coach Harriet, um, he had, um, you know, like he, he, he's a well-known coach in South Florida. So I was like. What what better else to go than St. Thomas? You know, where 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 better else to go than St. Thomas? So, um, I talked to Coach Harriet in the off season. So, um, so Coach Harriet went to this coaches convention and showed them my sophomore year highlight tape, and I got four offers in one day, like my first oh, day wow. of transfer to St. Thomas. Yeah, so so that that was just a blessing, you know, that was just a blessing. And then, um, the whole reason why I went from St. Thomas to Deerfield was just to graduate early. Because at St. Thomas, they don't let you graduate early. They're a private school. And I would have had to stay there until May. So I just wanted to get into to the college atmosphere and, you know, just just get, get to work and get um get my relationship with my coaches down packed and just play, play as a yeah. freshman. Yeah, because you were – you're, like, really good academically, right? Because I saw you had offers from yeah. Ivy Leagues and stuff like that. And then you yeah, came yeah. in early to UM in spring, right? Yeah. Yep, exactly. Did it, did it ever cross your mind twice to probably go to Harvard? Because a lot of people, you know, that's that's basically what every student goes for. Like, that's the dream. Did it ever cross your mind? Oh, no, no, no. For sure it did. When when I got those um those Ivy League offers, like Princeton, Yale, um, Harvard, you know, just all those schools, um, my, you, you should have saw, like, the reaction on my mom's face. My mom was just, you know, like, just, just amazingly happy and just, um, just she, she felt like accomplished and she should feel accomplished because my whole life um, she's been on my on my butt about, you know, just make sure you have the grades and just give because me growing up, I, um, my parents and my, my dad told me that, like, you know, like the realistic part of it that, you know, um, that I'm short, I'm not the fastest, you know, so um I had to give the coaches one less excuse to, you know, to give me an opportunity. And so my mom was always telling me, you know, just get straight A's and B's are okay, but she prefers straight A's. And that's the least I could do. You know, she, she, she puts food in my stomach. She puts clothes on my back, a roof over my head. So the least I could do is give her straight A's, you know, so. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Would, but, did you like, as a student athlete, was it kind of hard to balance that out? like your senior, junior year? Um, no, n- not really, because once you get um, once you get the process, it's easy. You know, just go to school, learn in class, um, just do what you have to do, and then go home, do homework, whatever. It's just a one, two, three. It's not really, like, that, that, that difficult, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, like I said before, my mom did so much for me that homework and studying is the least I could do, you know, to, to repay her. Yeah. So, yeah. Right now at UM, what are you studying? I'm studying sports administration right now, but I might switch my um my major to like sports psychology or something like that. Nice. So I was reading something, right? Um, that it was like you text your teammates every morning to motivate them. Oh yeah, the- yeah, yeah. So how's yeah. that? Yeah, in the spring, um, when we first got here, we created a little group chat of the 2020 guys and um we're just 
we're just so much better now. Like, like our connection is, is unbreakable. Like we have an unbreakable bond and I feel like um, every morning I just always try to bring a positive, positive mindset to like working out with like, with like Philly or coach Philly and um, e- e- even a practice, you know, the four days of spring that we did have practice. I always wanted them, um, our 2020 guys to just come in with a positive mindset and we did and we've been crushing it. Yeah. Like, like you said, you know, you, you seem like really motivated. Plus you're always motivating your teammates from like the people I know that are like that, you know, they always go through something in their life, you know, like, the, is there something that motivates you to motivate other people like that? Oh, uh, for sure, man. For sure. Um, g- going into my 11th grade year, well, my going into my 12th grade year, I had, um, three garden angels. So three, three, uh, family members of my family that, that passed and um, um, leaving leaving uh, my senior year I ended up having seven so oh, so like th- that just like just seeing how fast life goes and comes and at all ages too it wasn't just old like I'm pretty sure you, you've heard of my friend uh, Bryce Gowdy pa- passed away From Deerfield right yeah yeah uh, um, Bryce and um, my grandmother, my pops, all the, all those, all those amazing people, you know, that the, they pass, and it's just like I, I wouldn't want to go with what they, what they going through, you know. So I just put a mindset in my day or in my mind every single day that like um, I know, I know that they would give anything to be here with me right now, and I would give anything to be with with them right now. So um, I just don't let a day pass where I have regrets. I leave everything everything on the table, everything on the field, everything in the weight room, everything in the classroom every single day because, you know, um, I have so much motivation that I feel like nothing this year could stop me because I just have so much motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could tell, man. When you transitioned from high school to college, right, like you got play time. A lot of freshmen don't get play time. And like you said, you're a little bit undersized, you know, from what people would say. I'm 5'5", five, five, so. <laughs> so, but you get me, right? So yeah, um, so you got play time as a punt return and all of that. Your role coming into this year, like, what are you? It's obviously you're expecting it to be bigger, but like, can you explain your role coming into this year? How it changes from last year? Oh well, um, last year was um a lot of like learning, I guess you could say, like just like learning on how college works, but um. Now this season, I know exactly what to, what's expected, and I'm looking to start. You know, like it's it's the coach said it's open competition, so I'm looking to start. And um, anything less would be a dissatisfaction for me. Yeah. When when you see UM, right? Like, was UM always your dream? Oh yeah, yeah. Since I was like five years old. Oh wow. Uh... Mm-hmm. And was that one of your first offers, or that came later on? <laughs> Well, Miami was my sixth offer. You see the coaches, right? Because it's regarded as like tight end, you, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes wide receiver, you. Does that, is that kind of why, apart from it being your dream, that made you select the school, like the coaching staff, and you know they're going to prepare you well? Oh, yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, Well, one part of it was, you know, just the legacy of Miami. Mm-hmm. And um, another part is just, I'm in South Florida, you know, like I, I grew up a South Florida kid my whole life. And um, most kids that leave South Florida are, you know, either just have a better opportunity somewhere or just are, you know, be, let's be real, just scared of the competition. And that's what I lived on my whole life is just competition, competition, competition. Because like I said, I'm undersized. I'm not fast enough, you know, all those physical um, attributes and stuff like that. Um all I knew my whole life was just compete, you know, so just beat that, beat the man in front of you. And so I was never scared of competition and I actually thrive off competition. So when I had a chance to go, um, when I had an opportunity to go, you know, sign with the University of Miami, it was just a dream come true. And like thriving off of competition and stuff, you were ranked around, according to 20, 24-7 sports, you were around like the 600 athlete or something like that. You perform way better. <laughs> right your freshman year would um like where would you rank yourself in, in that i mean 
like throughout my whole high school career, I didn't really care about those 24-7, uh, 24-7, all those other ones, because, again, before you even go to the camps and everything, they already have the invites ready. And, you know, it's it, like for me being honest, um, I didn't really care. I just went to the camps and stuff to show that all these kids that they are inviting that, you know, that, that, that I could beat them in. Um, at a lot of camps, I did some crazy things, <laughs> but, um, but uh, just, you know, just, just going out to this camp and stuff, I wasn't really looking on, you know, gaining this star, um, getting ranked this highest. And, you know, I, all those kids that are ranked in top 20, top 50, they're mm -hmm. all in South Florida right now. So I'm surrounded by them and I know my worth, you know, so, um, and some people do n n not as much people do, but some people know my worth and, um, all I care is that my, my coaches know my worth and my teammates know my worth. So that's it. When you were in those camps, what was one of the top corners you, you smoked? I, I can't even remember. Um, I remember we, I went to like a Florida camp or something like that in my 11th grade off season and smoked their like um, corner commit or whatever, the, the corner that was committed to them. I sent, I, I actually think I went like viral a little bit on, on, on the route or whatever, but um, like it, it was just like, I don't, I don't remember um, little stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, anybody you could think of like th that went to the camps, I was always like, trying to go against them and stuff because like that's what I like like I don't like to like oh he's the best art so I'm gonna go against the next person you know like I want the best because that satisfies me knowing that I beat the best you know yeah of course when uh, like those camps right like for high school athletes now like a suggestion are the camps basically like one big factor that gets your name out do you have to apply for it or it's like only selection I mean one thing that, that I'm learning, well, that, that I've learned over the years is that the only thing that matters is when the pads come on, you know, those, those pads come on, um, you're in the actual scheme with your teammates and seeing how, how well you work with your team and how well um, you can adapt to a scheme. That's all that matters. Like, so like those camps and stuff, yeah, they're, they're cool. And if you have like, absolute no recognition at all then yeah maybe go to one of those camps but only thing that matters like to me from my eyes is you know just tackle football yeah well you came in early to the spring like we said earlier right so you had like you kind of went through coaching changes because when Lashley came in you were there before him right well I was there like like um, two three weeks before them they came in yeah uh, so it wasn't too hard to adjust to it. No, no, no. Because I didn't. I mean, no, no, no. I, I didn't learn the um the old offense. I, I the only offense I learned was this new offense. Okay. Are you liking it so far? Because I know Lashley, like he has that. You know, from I believe it was Memphis that he was at, or it was an AAC I, school. I saw, yeah. As yeah, so like he's a high flying offense. I mean, they were mm -hmm. scoring 40, 50 points every time. So, mm -hmm. do you like it so far? Oh, I'm not gonna lie. He's awesome. Coach Lash is amazing. Like his offense is just is awesome. You know, it's just so many opportunities to make plays and stuff. And this year is going to be really fun. Really, really fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having us, man. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it.